Welcome back to our channel and our Train With Us series. Today we're going to be talking about the different types of cleaning chemical that we use and how these cleaning chemicals work with a dilution control system. So here at OctoClean we have a couple different chemicals that we call core cleaning chemicals. We specifically require franchisees to use dilution control. Good reason for that. Each chemical is made in a specific formulation. So when I talk formulation, not only is it made in a lab to formulate what it's cleaning, it's also important that the amount of water that we add to a cleaning chemical is correct. So this is a waxy product, so waxy sanitary supply. This is what we call 315. This is an acid restroom cleaner. So how does this work? Well, pretty simple. It looks like a regular gallon that you would buy at the grocery store or wherever, wherever else until you take the cap off. If you look at the cap, the cap actually has a metered tip in it. So unlike the ways of the past where you'd have to pour it out and guess, this will do it for you. The pressure of the water will send it out and it'll pull the proper amount of chemical to water. So all of these work the same. So we're never gonna pull this metered tip out and use it as you would use it for a gallon dilutable chemical. So that's the number one thing that I want you to gather from this is when you're seeing dilution control chemicals, that's what we're paying for. We're paying for the ability to have a super concentrated chemical being able to be metered through a tip similar to this where you don't even have to think about it. Your employees don't have to think about it. They press a button similar to a soda machine and it gives them the proper amount of water to chemical ratio for the cleaning they're gonna do. So again, we're gonna go through these chemicals and we're gonna differentiate what gets used on what surfaces. So this is a restroom chemical, pretty common, right? This would be used on toilets, sinks, urinals, anything inside your restroom. This isn't something that you're gonna use outside of your restroom because again, it's an acid. You wouldn't wanna have an acid on a tabletop. So this is a acid, restroom base, 315, as you notice, everything's gonna be numbered, cleaning chemical. So let's move on. This is for restrooms. Let's move on to general surface cleaning. This is Waxy 200, it's a general purpose cleaner. This is for those times when you're cleaning and it's just not coming clean. Fingerprints on walls, doors, door frames, um, windows maybe if, you, if it's really greasy. And again, this, like the other chemical, has a meter tip and you notice the tips are different colors. The different colors mean the different ratio of water to chemical. That's important to remember. If you were to pull one out of the 315 that we just looked at and put it into here, it's not gonna be formulated the same when you're pressing that button with the water and it's pushing it into a spray bottle or a mop bucket. So let's keep that in mind as well. So 200, this is a surface cleaner. Let's move on. 210, again, yellow chemical. This is what they call a neutral cleaner. So a neutral cleaner, they call it neutral for a reason. It's not gonna harm anything. So let's say you have a beautiful marble floor and you're concerned about, you know, I don't wanna put anything too harsh on this, it might ruin it. Neutral cleaners are perfect for that. Now this is what we use to mop with, but that's not to say that you couldn't use this for other things like wiping down a countertop in a spray bottle situation if you're worried about what that countertop is. If you have a quartz countertop, this may be a better option than using a glass cleaner with a high alkaline or you know, even an acid cleaner if you're concerned about that, about the cleaning or about the actual surface being harmed. This is your perfect chemical for that. So when you see neutral, think that. Think it's just a soap picking up the water and picking up the soils, I mean. So it's not something where you're gonna harm the surface, it's just gonna clean. Now, if it's really dirty on the other hand, it's not gonna do a very good job cleaning, but if it's a surface like, let's say, a kitchen with a beautiful white quartz countertop, this is probably what you wanna go with. So neutral cleaner means safe. Neutral cleaner also means safe for flooring. So if I'm mopping flooring that you know, has floor finish on that's super shiny, and I wanna use neutral cleaner. It's not gonna leave a haze, and it's also not gonna harm any surface products that we put on. So wax, floor finish, whatever you want to call it, it's not going to take that off. It's not going to dull it. It's going to keep it safe. It's going to keep it clean to a point. So keep that in mind. This is a mop chemical. Let's move on. This is 543. 
This is your glass cleaner and glass and surface cleaner. This chemical as a franchisee will be the chemical that you use the most, honestly, because this is a chemical, unlike the 200 chemical that we looked at, this is not gonna streak up. So a lot of modern surfaces today are, you know, formica or something with a covering where it's not real wood. That will tend to streak if you get something that's too high in strength or too high in alkaline. When you're wiping, it's gonna leave streaks. So this will be your probably number one chemical that you use. You can clean glass with it and then turn around and clean this, the countertop with it. Very safe chemical. Again, we'll look at dilution control as well. And remember different color tips. So this has a yellow tip. So that's gonna meter out the proper amount of water to chemical. So disinfectants, what do I use disinfectants on? This is a neutral disinfectant. So we talked about neutral cleaners being safe. Same for this, this is neutral, but it's also a disinfectant. So what will disinfectants do if I use them on a mopped surface? They're gonna streak. You're gonna have a streaky surface. You're gonna wonder, well, you know, I, I'm, uh, I know I mopped it, but it kind of looks like I used a wet towel and it like, didn't really come out that well. That's what this is intended to do. So there's quaternary ammonia that kills the bacteria, pathogens, whatever you wanna call them on a surface, and that's what's turning that haze. So as you wipe this clean, that's what this is gonna leave. In hospital environments, in your restrooms per se, that's what we're looking for. But let's change that to a office environment and I'm cleaning my floors that are nice and nice and shiny and I'm mopping them with disinfectant. Well, you're gonna have a hazy floor. So be aware of that. But there are all instances where you may need to do that. Let's say you had somebody vomit in a bathroom and you need to mop it up. You have to have a disinfectant because it's gonna kill those pathogens that actually are causing that odor. So keep that in mind. But remember, tomorrow, you probably wanna use the 210 that we spoke of to go in behind it and actually get those streaks up and make it look nice and pretty again. And the last thing I wanna to touch upon is the shelf life of a disinfectant. Different disinfectants are made differently, but this is a quaternary ammonia disinfectant. So the moment that I add water to this, it's only good for 24 hours. So let's say I have a spray bottle and I'm putting it in a spray bottle and I have it on my janitor's cart. Every 24 hours, I need to pour that out and start over again with this disinfectant. And it's very important to remember because a lot of people think, well, it's a disinfectant, it'll be there forever and you're cleaning with it tomorrow and the efficacy is just not there. So keep that in mind. It's only good for 24 hours and then you have to get rid of it. If you're using a quaternary ammonia, and a lot of times they will be this yellow color. And that's an easy way to tell. If you have a question about what is what, because there is hydrogen peroxide chemicals that are disinfectants that last up to seven days, even longer. So look at your MSDS or your SDS and see what it has to say. Reach out, let me know, and we can talk about what it is if you have any more questions. So that in short, is a brief explanation of your dilution control cleaning chemicals or your core cleaning products that we expect when you were coming into a building that that's what we're working with. When we're having a trainer show up to your building, it's important that these chemicals are available because we know how they work. And that's very important. It's same thing as having the proper tool to fix a product this is what we're looking at here. This is the proper tools you need to have effective cleaning methods. I hope this video was helpful to you and you learned a lot. If you'd like to see more of our content, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you guys next time.